we're doing our predictive NFL mock drafts. Uh, some would call this the biggest waste of time ever. Subscribe, hit that bell so you can come hang out with us. We're three friends who love talking football. We're always looking for a fourth. And the way that you can become a number four is get into the comment section here. We we're actually competing on this and we want you guys to compete along with us. We're going to yep. put the scoring system here so you guys can see how we're going to keep track of our points. This is our second annual doing this and it'll be our third annual live reaction to the drafts on Thursday. But here's the point system. In the comment section below, there is, if you check out the description, I already put in the draft order. You guys can copy and paste that so it makes it a lot quicker for you and fill out your mock drafts and try and beat us in this challenge. But what we're doing today is Joe sent us his mock draft, my mock draft and Tony's mock drafts. We're gonna go over this thing and see who we got going at each pick. So you're gonna get three mock drafts, completely different, in one video. What do you say we give something away, right? If the, if somebody can, I don't know what it's gonna be. What if the winner of the mock draft gets a jersey of choice, basically, which whoever their favorite team is, but it has to be whoever their team took in the first round. That's a good one. Ooh, that's a good one. First overall pick. Drum roll, please. Whoa! Again, predictive mock. The more that I have sat with the idea of what the Panthers are doing, I might actually shoot for the moon with Anthony Richardson. What Anthony Richardson could be, why not go? Why not try to go to that well and see if you could just smash it out of the park and have a guy in the NFC that in two years could be right there with Jalen Hurts, best quarterback in the NFC. But I just think that Bryce Young, he's his processing is just so quick and and the way he plays the game with with such great instincts. Frank Reich just can't do it. He can't pass on him. He's he's got to take him, even though. You know, he has the size concerns. But if he can overcome those size concerns, I think he's got a real shot to be a top 10 quarterback in the league for a long time, Tony. All right, let's go to pick number two here. This is where things start to get mixed up a little bit. Okay. Me and Tony, right. the same pick here. We're both going with Will Anderson to the Houston Texans, who do not trade out of this position in our mock drafts. But Joe has got the spicy take. Not only do the Texans trade with the Colts at fourth overall, their division rival, they trade with the Colts so the Colts can get a quarterback, and the quarterback's not C.J. Stroud or Anthony Richardson. You want to talk about Will Anderson first, because we both pick Will Anderson, and then we'll talk yeah. about... Yeah, the thing that drives me nuts most when people talk about Will Anderson is they act like he can't get any better. Everybody talks yeah. about the upside of Tyree Wilson, the upside of Will McDonald and Van Ness and whatever. We already know what Will Anderson is. There is opportunity for him to evolve his game more. It's not like he's maxed out what he can do on the football field me too i think this is the surefire guy that can be dynamic for D'Amico ryan's in this defense and what i'm thinking here the texans are going to build this defense up first and then look at quarterback uh either later in this draft or at next year's draft and just kind of tread water and see what they can do let's talk about joe taking will levis here why would they be helping them out and if they were it better be for like multiple picks like not just like oh we you're moving up two spots we want your third rounder no no we want your second rounder this year and your second rounder next year and a fourth and so somewhere so i think it would have to be massive but also like if you're the colts why not just stay at four if texans aren't drafting a quarterback and i think really the the suitors are limited for the texans if you take out the titans and the colts because now you're stretching it out you know all the way back to 19 with the Bucks, or if the Vikings are really aggressive all the way back to what 23 there just really isn't suitors if the Raiders or any of these teams that are in the top 10 aren't coming up lines maybe to get a quarterback then the Texans are, would be smart just to stay here and, and pick an edge rusher and the Colts would be smart if the Texans are picking an edge rusher to, to just wait because I think Will Levis would be on the board in that situation all right let's go on to pick three two more trades here I'm staying the Cardinals stay here and pick Ed rusher Tyree Wilson, who everyone's starting to be enamored with. Joe has the Lions trading up again, or another trade, I should say. This one's the Lions trading up to get a defensive tackle, Jalen Carter. And then, Tony, you have Joe's team trading up to get the Ohio State quarterback. I went this route because if the Raiders think that they can get to, 
get ahead of the Colts, right? Like in my version of this, Will Anderson's gone. Now, if you can get ahead of the Colts and make sure that you get the exact QB that you want, I think that's worth whatever they could get. But you also have to not only think about this season, but going forward. You're now falling, falling that much further behind the Chargers with Herbert. Mahomes and the Chiefs aren't, I mean, they're going to be at the top of the division forever. As a Chargers fan, that pains me to say this, but like, that's the mountain that every AFC West team has to climb. There's a fundamental piece that you need to play defense in the NFL and it's pass rush. But the Cardinals do need to find a suitor because they need more players, period. They need as many players as they can get out of this draft and the next one probably. When the lines are on the clock at third overall and that news breaks and, and Roger Goodell says there's been a trade, I think that reaction is going to be feels it feels like a like you could still get Jalen Carter and Joe's version of this with two quarterbacks going right. Joe's version would have yeah. still have Will Anderson, Tyree Wilson on the board and Witherspoon. Yep. I just think that you still have a good shot with, with Jalen Carter there uh, picking at six. But I like it, Joe. This is wild. if Joe's draft happens and we get back to back trades for Will Levis and then trading up to get Jalen Carter at three. Uh, I'm going to have to call an Uber home from the, from the draft party because I'm going to get bombed. I'm going to just tip and tequila, enjoy myself to the maximum. All right, let's go to pick number four here, Tony. Da, 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 da. <laughs> oh, all right. Another trade for Joe. Joe is going to have the record for trades. Well, I think this is the trade back from the Texans, right? The Texans traded with the Colts to get Will Levis. So in Joe's mock, the Texans go back to four, and this is who they get instead, which I think uh, D'Amico Ryans would be pretty excited if he got some extra picks and Tyree Wilson. The Colts and Will Levis, they seem to be a match made in heaven. You know, Jim Irsay and Will Levis are both eccentric human beings and fun. The talent is there. The reasons that I like Will Levis are the reasons that I like other quarterbacks who come into the draft where it's like you showed major potential and promise with much less talent around you. I'm banking that these rumors are Mac Jones like, you know, Mac okay. Jones, the third pick and everyone was hyping it up. We were basically ready for it. Day of the draft comes, they go with Trey Lance anyways. I just can't see how Sykin can leave Philadelphia and do what he did with Jalen Hurts, have him as an MVP candidate, get the Eagles all the way to the Super Bowl, and then pass on a guy who might be more athletic than Jalen Hurts. And I know that Anthony Richardson needs a lot of development as a passer. And I know that the Colts know he needs a lot of development as a passer. But so did Lamar Jackson when he came into the league. But his athleticism got him the time to develop as a passer. I think Steichen with Jonathan Taylor and Anthony Richardson in the backfield, they could get to work on a heavy run scheme like Philly has and protect Richardson and keep him using his strengths for the first couple years of his career. I really like Anthony Richardson with the Colts too. Like it, for me, it could have been either one of these guys. I basically just tied this to the more, I've heard more positive rumors about them liking Will Levis than them liking Anthony Richardson. But I would love Anthony Richardson for his career in this spot. I think it would be absolutely, like I think it would be dynamite. Like they it could be a team that could win 10 games next year. Let's go to pick five. Yep. Here we go. Seattle, stay in put. I think this is the first pick, or oh, the second pick, other than the first pick, where Joe does not have a trade projected, but Will Anderson finally goes off the board in his mock draft. For me, this was almost Will Anderson and Tyree Wilson switched around, right? But I went with Tyree Wilson. I like Jalen Carter a lot better. And I, if I were the Seahawks, I would pick Jalen Carter. But I'm predicting that Pete, who's like 70 he doesn't want to chew bubble gum on the sideline that much longer, Mike. Like he wants a guy that in the next couple of years is going to give him sack production. And I think that they're going to be going pass rush also. Obviously, we all think they're going to be going pass rush at this spot. I'm going with Jalen Carter just because I have Will Anderson and Tyree Wilson off the board already um, in my mock draft. So I think that I, I kind of had my hand forced here as the last guy left. But I think Pete Carroll, when he's looking at all of these guys, especially these pass rushers, He's got to have some confidence in himself to get the best out of whoever he drafts. And if it's Carter, it's Carter. If it's Anderson, it's Anderson. And if it's Wilson, it's Wilson. But all we do know is that Seattle needs pass rush, and they need pass rush now. Why not use this fifth overall pick to address that need, especially knowing that there's another need that they want to address in this draft, 
They got a pick at 20. Get ready for this Seattle defense, y'all. Pick six. I got to trade now. My first trade of the draft. Yeah. Uh, talk about this. Like, you think the Raiders are moving up one spot to, well, to get him before he falls? My idea is, is I think that once we start to see CJ Stroud leaking and the Lions come up on the clock here at six, if, you know, the Lions are still on the clock and they don't trade up for Jalen Carter, like in Joe's mock draft. The Lions might pick up the phone and see, like, the Titans especially. They probably won't mind moving back to 11 for some extra picks. They may be interested in moving back to 19 because then that gives them back-to-back -back picks with Tampa Bay. Uh, but I think that if they do pick up the phone, they do field some offers, and the Raiders come through with an offer, they probably will be more inclined to take that Raiders deal just because you're going to move back one spot, get the same exact player you're going to draft at sixth overall, and you get the extra pick that the Raiders have to pay to keep Tennessee from moving up to get Stroud. Um, and I also just want to have this in here because I'm, I'm str strat... Can't even say the word. I'm strategizing, Tony. I yeah. think there's a chance the Raiders even trade up further. So this is like a, if the Raiders trade up, I get a point no matter what just for having that trade up in my mock draft. <laughs> I like it. There's a, I have a couple strategy plays like that yeah. myself, too. What do you think about Joe's uh, pick here? Cardinals trade back. I'm assuming they probably got a, a haul for the third overall pick. And they also get who they have to believe is cornerback one in this class, Devon Witherspoon, even though I have, I have Gonzalez over him in my rankings list. I think it's a good pick. I think you're getting... If, if he's evaluated on their board as the number one player at the position, like in Joe's version of this draft, there's already three edge rushers off the board. So go somewhere else where you can get maximum value. There was a rumor that Kyler Murray and, and the front office were talking, and Kyler Murray wants them to take a uh, tackle Paris Johnson Jr. Well, let's see what happens for pick seven. What happens? Dot, dot, dot. And there you go. Cardinals trade back with the Raiders in your situation yeah. for Paris Johnson Jr. Kelvin Beecham or whoever Beecham, whoever the tackle is there, was kind of bad mouthing Kyler Murray a little bit. And then all of a sudden he re-signed with the team, I think on a one year, two year deal or something. They have another tackle spot. I just think that if you're going to have Kyler Murray potentially sit out for an entire year, why not get an offensive lineman this year? Start protecting the quarterback that's injured. That's probably a good idea, huh, Arizona? Uh, and then I'm going with the Lions. Obviously, they traded back with the Raiders as one spot. And I'm going with the cornerback, Christian Gonzalez. I also think the Lions, if these D linemen, like in my mock draft, goes down the way it does, they're going to look at that and go, damn, man, we wanted one of those D linemen. And now we can get the corner a little later. And then maybe they pick up the phone for that reason as well. And I think the Lions need a man coverage corner. And Witherspoon is good at man coverage. I'm not saying he's not. But I just think that Gonzalez has more of the size and the man coverage skills and ball skills that the Lions are going to need to flip this secondary around. I believe they had the worst or second to worst secondary last year, and now they've added, I think they added Cam Sutton, and they got a C.J. Garner-Johnson in there. They added a few few guys to join that DB room, and they get another one here in Christian Gonzalez. And he can wear number zero, too, that Detroit defense. And they, I think they added one other guy, too, uh, Emmanuel Mosley, JSN. Uh, wide receiver out of Ohio State didn't play much last year. A lot of really easy completions at the next level for any sort of young quarterback. So I like this pick for the Texans here, depending on whoever they bring in, whether it is they trade for Trey Lance, like I'm suggesting, or they do they draft a quarterback in this class. We all have the Raiders moving. Yeah. So this is the pick seven. No Raiders pick here. This is where the Raiders right. are supposed to be. Joe hasn't moving back to twelve. Yeah, I see that. Like, Stroud to yeah. the Raiders. Let's go. Josh McDaniels ruined this kid. I mean, I'm sure it was real great. <laughs> <laughs> On to this one. And when I was putting this one together, I was like, this is interesting because me and you are kind of thinking similar here for Atlanta. And I remember when we did one of the mock drafts, me and you both were like, they need defense really bad of some sort, both in the secondary and on the D line. And even that linebacker too, but that's something you got to address later in the draft. We both are going to edge rusher here. Joe's going offense still. But CJ Stroud's falling. With the Falcons, I had so much trouble. I had Brian Branch in this spot, and then I was like, nope, that's too soon. I can't. I had JSN in this spot. I had Bijan in this spot. I had everything. And then I was like, I just kept looking at their roster. I'm like, what do they need? They need somebody else to bring pressure, right? It can't just be Grady Jarrett on the D line by himself. You got to bring somebody else 
Yeah, and I can't even, with the defense being as bad as it was last year, I can't imagine them going offense at all three years in a row. A lot of people have them taken. I think they're even the favorite in betting odds to take B. John Robinson right here. Uh, so we'll see if that becomes something that, that the Falcons are thinking about. I'm thinking the exact same thing as you, Tony. I think you do need to help out your secondary. They have no chance with the pass rush that they had last year. They brought in Calais Campbell. They brought in Bud Dupree. So there's some vets. To yeah, I for forgot roll. about them. I'm going with Nolan Smith because the more and more I dig into this guy, the more and more I'm falling in love with him. And, and I was one when I saw the testing of the combine to go, hold up. I'm not just going to fall for this immediately and say that he should be this top 10 pick just because he did all this. But then when I started to dig, like I said, you just start to realize this this guy has everything that you need in a pass rusher but size, but he negates it. Like he, he's so strong and so technically sound that, that he negates it. And also there's a report coming out that almost every NFL team agrees that this is your best leader and that this guy has a chance to be a captain very young in his career based off what he did at Georgia and that defense. And if you're leading that defense, I want you to lead my defense. Well, in this case, the Atlanta Falcons. I love it. Let's go to pick nine. Pick nine it is. And here we go. Offensive linemen starting to fly off the board. I got my first offensive lineman coming off with Paris Johnson Jr. And I don't know who the top tackle is, in this class, Tony, I think it's between all the sevens that you're seeing on the screen right now. But whichever way it goes, I'm not sure. But I think that Chicago, if they give Justin Fields a choice or if they ask him, like, man, is there this any guy you prefer? Justin Fields is probably going to say his former teammate, Paris Johnson Jr. And what locked this in for me when I was deciding this and the way I did this is I went pick by pick and just dug on everything I can pick by pick. I spent almost an entire day doing it. And when I went through the Bears pick, I found an old interview. I think it was from last year. So Justin Fields is already in the NFL. Paris Johnson is still at Ohio State. And Paris Johnson was on like this 20-minute rant about how good of friends him and Justin still are and how they still want to play together. They want to play together in the league one day, all this stuff. And I was like, well, let's make it happen then in my mock draft. Again, the people that I trust and respect their opinions of the most will keep saying that Skaronsky is the best overall offensive lineman in the draft. And even if he has moved to guard, I had a version of this draft that was that I was going to put up here where I had Skaronsky going to the Eagles because if he's on the board, like the the Bears need a lot and they need an edge rusher, they need pressure, they need something. So if if some of these rushers are there at nine, I could easily see the Bears going with a Nolan Smith, Lucas Van Ness. Like if Jalen Carter falls to nine, anyway, let's go to ten here, Tony. This is an interesting one. The Eagles are a team that I think is really hard to predict which way they're going to go. I think it'd be easier if you know who's going to be on the board at 10 in the first place. I think they can go a bunch of different directions with the state of their team right now. Joe has them trading out. Joe has the Eagles trading out of this 10th pick with the Jets who come up and get their tackle. I have the Eagles doing what? Who was it? Someone said this in the chat. It was a yeah. exotic copy 214. Bajan going to Philly. I bet you he's a Cowboys fan. He's That's got right. Cowboys. He's had a poppy. They're not taking Bijan. I know this is fun and what everybody wants what? to do. They're not taking Bijan. Not, not there. Maybe in Joe's version where they trade back. What would take them to the next level? And that's why this, these Derrick Henry rumors are kind of crazy because Derrick Henry would take them to the next level if he could stay healthy. It's a freaking superstar running back. And congrats to Miles Sanders, man. He had a good year last year. He got his payday. I think he's in Carolina now. But he was not a superstar running back in this backfield. You get Bajan Robinson behind... This Eagles offensive line, he might go for a crazy stat line his rookie year and definitely win rookie of the year. And the Eagles offense will be even better, harder to stop, and control the time possession more. Now I understand this is a reach for a running back at 10. Uh, but Tony, you want edge rusher here, the guy that I like a lot, Nolan Smith. And the Eagles defense is basically becoming the Georgia Hall of Fame defense. So I, I had this flip between Lucas Van Ness and Nolan Smith that went back and forth uh, between 10 and 8 of who the these two teams would pick. Nolan Smith feels like he's going to come in. He's going to rotate. He's going to get a chance to learn from Brandon Graham with maybe in his final season with the Eagles. Learn from Hassan Reddick, who just had a monster breakout season last year. And they, they actually kind of play the same. And he's going to get to learn how to rush the passer a little bit more and be used in different ways than he was at Georgia um, and, and get more snaps and just be part of and add to a really great culture with the Philadelphia Eagles. The Jets getting a little scared. They saw Peter Spronsky go in his draft, his mock draft. 
and they go, you know what? We we need Paris Johnson, so we need to move up right now a couple picks. And for the Jets with the Aaron Rodgers trade, this is now from 15 to 10 instead of 13 to 10. So keep that in mind as well. Yeah, I have the Jets drafting a tackle too, so I'm I'm all for it. I think if you're going to bring in a 40 year old quarterback, you need to make sure your offensive line is sealed up. And and early in the draft process, I remember seeing another rumor. I chase these rumor mills trying to figure this out. That Aaron Rodgers wants to tackle as well. So he knows. He knows. I need to have a clean pocket, man, because the rest of the picks are going to show. It's 11 through 20 with this graphic. But here we go. Here's what we got. And if I made any mistakes, Tony, please call them out and let me know. If you see something interesting on there on whichever board, whether it's Mike, Joe, or Tony, and you want to call it out, if you want to applaud it, well, I'm here for you applauding <laughs> something that I did. But also, too, if you just want to say, like, this is this is not good, I'm fine with that as well. Anyways, I went with Will Levis to the Titans at 11. I have him sitting there. And then at 12, I actually had the Texans moving back out of that position, getting a few extra picks because of what I'm hoping that they eye Hendon Hooker. But we'll get to that pick next. And I have the commanders coming up who say, you know what? This corner, we got to go get him now because our need was corner. And we were cool with Joey Porter. Or we were cool with Deontay Banks. But now Devon Witherspoon is a couple picks in front of us. Let's go get this dude. This guy's a top five overall pick in a lot of drafts. And now we can get him at 12. So I think that the commanders might be a little aggressive there and trade up for, for their cornerback if they see him falling. Another thing to keep in mind, y'all, the cornerbacks are falling. Like, like we were talking about earlier, Christian Gonzalez's stock was falling. And in this mock draft, me and Tony have Witherspoon going at 12. And Joe has Gonzalez going at 12 to the Raiders. So just keep an eye on those corners. I got the Packers at 13, taking a wide receiver. The first year they don't have Aaron Rodgers. Jordan Love can't carry the receivers like Rodgers can. So maybe the Packers are inclined to go wide receiver this year. And if Jackson Smith and Jigba's on the board, he'd probably be the pick. I got the Patriots taking a guy that I just think is such a Patriots guy in Lucas Van Ness. Uh, and then I got the Jets going with their tackle, Peter Skronsky, who falls a little bit, but it's because I have uh, Paris Johnson Jr. being my tackle one to the Bears earlier in the draft. Again, the Texans, quarterback Hendon Hooker, a little bit of a hot take here of him going, especially in the top 16 picks. But I think that his stock is slowly rising. I'm seeing a lot of rumors that the Vikings are very interested in Hendon Hooker. I'm seeing some rumors the Titans like Hendon Hooker. So, and I don't know the Texans. I didn't see anything on the Texans specifically, but the Texans don't get quarterback at the top of the draft and they still want someone to put in there to try out in this offense. I think if you recoup some picks, you get some extra picks, this minimizes the risk of reaching on Hooker just to be sure that you get it because you don't know if he's going to fall. They had the 33rd pick, so they could draft him there as well. And I, I did put that in my notes that if they draft him at 33rd, I'm going to be telling everyone on day two, give me my extra freaking points. Uh, Steelers, I have them going cornerback Joey Porter, as we all do, for obvious reasons of why we want Joey Porter to be a Steeler. If you guys don't know, just go search the name Joey Porter. At 18, I have the line staying put, not trading, even though there's a lot of rumors flying. They might be interested in trading up or down from this spot. I have them taking an interior defensive lineman, like you did, Tony, in Kalijah Kansi. And then at 19, I got the Bills making a big splash move here, trading up from 27 to get a wide receiver to throw in this wide receiver room with Stephon Diggs and Gabe Davis. I just think that they tried to get as much out of Isaiah McKenzie as they could. And they just, they want a really good slot receiver. And Isaiah McKenzie is good. He just isn't what the Bills want at that position. And, and they've tried other players there as well. I think they have a kid named Shakur who's very good that can play in the slot, but I think he could be better outside with Diggs and Gabe Davis if Zay Flowers is a Buffalo Bill. I also think for the Bills, they might be aggressive in this draft, Tony, because they got to be looking at this roster, all the contracts, all the star players, the youth is getting older, and, and you're hitting a point now where you're going to have to retool in the next couple of years, if not next offseason. Why not push the chips in, make a big move, try and take this offense to an even another level with Josh Allen running around like a maniac and throwing the ball down the field, and, and who knows, maybe you get hot at the right time and make a run at the Super Bowl before you know Stephon Diggs asks to go to Dallas or Von Miller retires and you know it starts to be a, a era for the Bills where they're gonna have to retool like we're seeing some of these other teams with young quarterbacks entering or like what the Chiefs did with Patrick Mahomes and then Seahawks another little bit of a hot take here but I think that uh John Michael Smith is the best center slash interior offensive lineman mainly center available in this draft the Seahawks probably would pick up the phone and field some calls here. I didn't really have a trade partner because there wasn't anyone on the board that I saw 
would want to move up or any player on the board that someone would want to aggressively move up for like the Bills did Zay Flowers. So I just kept the Seahawks here. I had them draft the Minnesota center. They can use them at guard and they can use them at center whichever way they want to use them. The only problem, and so there is a there is an error with my draft. Uh, 16, I still have the commander sticking and picking at that spot. I, Handon Hooker's not in the first round of my draft. I'll go through mine quick. I went... Uh, QB from Florida, Anthony Richardson to the Titans at 11. Texans uh, get the cornerback from Illinois, Devin Witherspoon. The Packers get the slot receiver from Ohio State, uh, Jackson Smith and Jigba. The Lions trade up to 14 and get Christian Gonzalez from the University of Oregon. The Jets uh, move back, obviously, with the Rodgers trade. They get uh, Broder Jones, the offensive tackle. Uh, from Georgia. This is a mistake here. This is the Commanders, but this is one that I think is interesting. I'm going to talk more about in a second, but I have the Commanders taking the tight end from Utah, Dalton Kincaid, and I'll explain more why I have that in a second. Steelers, Joey Porter Jr. I thought about going offensive line here, but in my version of this, some offensive linemen are starting to fall. So why not go get a position they need, a player they're familiar with, a family they're familiar with, get Joey Porter Jr. It is fun. I don't really know if that's going to happen. The Patriots are on a trade back with the Lions. And I figure if they trade from 14 back to 18, Bill Belichick feels like the guy who would say, B. John Robinson cannot be on this board any longer. And he will figure out a way to make it work with Ramondre Stevenson and B. John Robinson in the same backfield. Like they're going to run some two tight end sets with Gasicki and, and uh, Hunter Henry. They're also going to run some crazy two back formations with Bijan and Ramondre Stevenson. It will get innovative. It will get fun. Will McDonald, the Buccaneers need a lot more than I think we think, right? Like Tom Brady came in and, and made some stuff work. So I, I had them going a couple different ways. I had them trading back at one point to get more picks but I just think if they can get an edge rusher there, maybe, maybe you know, maybe their defense is good enough uh, to keep them in it and keep it interesting there. Seahawks, uh, Tyler Lockett, we keep we keep sending them off. We keep trying to send them to the pasture. But uh, Zay Flowers, wide receiver, Boston College, uh, to the Seahawks. I'm gonna go back up to where it says 16 under Tony, um, and it says Texans. That's supposed to be Commanders. And they take Dalton Kincaid for this reason. And this is what I thought was interesting about it. You bring in Eric Bieniemy. Eric Bieniemy coached Travis Kelsey. The play styles are similar. And I need everybody to hear me when I say this. Dalton Kincaid is not and most likely never will be Travis Kelsey. But I think they both give it a great opportunity to always get open Easy catches, easy completions, and I think Dalton Kincaid could actually transfer pretty well into this, into the NFL, right? Like the transition for tight ends a lot of time is really difficult, but if you have a coach who's already seen it be successful and can kind of maybe help him get some shortcuts, can also maybe get him in touch with Travis Kelsey because he has a connection and he says, hey, these are some things we like to do. When you see zone, these are some places you like to sit. Hey, Sam Howell, come here. Look at this. These are what things worked for Patrick and for what you can get start to get them on the same page. He also will go into an offense that has really great wide receiver, like really great options at wide receiver that you're going to have attention to. And if you can get Dalton Kincaid matched up on linebackers, I don't care if he is a rookie. He's going to win a lot of those. And the biggest thing that has, I think, NFL teams excited, it has me excited as well. Guys this size, their hips are not supposed to be able to be as, as mobile and as flexible as Kincaid's are. They call it the hip dip. And it's a lot of things that, that receivers talk about because they can do it, obviously. They practice it. Tight ends usually just can't do it just because they're not flexible enough to do it. Travis Kelsey had that. Tony Gonzalez had that. A lot of the best tight ends ever had that. And you see it so clearly in Kincaid's tape that he's able to lower his hips to the ground without losing any speed. And that is how you can change your direction at abnormal rates for your size. On to yep. Joe here. I'll just run over him real quick for you, Tony. We got, got the it. Titans going offensive tackle with Broderick Jones, assuming they're replacing Taylor Luan there in Joe's mock draft. The Raiders trade back and get Christian Gonzalez. 
Hmm. 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 Thirteen. We go with the Eagles, who are trading back, I believe, from ten at this pick. They yep. get Clyde Jacanty. The New England Patriots go Edge Lucas Van Ness. So me and Joe's pick lines up there, and he has the Packers going safety with Brian Branch. The Commanders at sixteen take Hendon Hooker. So so Joe's a fan as well. Same spot, different team. Uh, the Steelers go Joey Porter Jr. We line up on that one. So if it's not Joey Porter Jr. For all of us, uh, Lions get tight end Dalton Kincaid, who we just did a big talk about. If you just tuned in, you want to rewind it a couple seconds. Uh, Buccaneers get running back with Sean Robinson. And then the Seahawks go with guard Osiris Torrance. So Joe's thinking kind of similar to me as far as the Seahawks looking at interior offensive line. No. There it is. The final part of our mock drafts. Bada boom. I got my Chargers getting tight end Dalton Kincaid. I originally liked Michael Mayer as the number one tight end in this class, just the way he brings as a blocker. The more and more I dug into Dalton Kincaid, I realized he's a good blocker. He's a good blocker. He might not be dominant. He's not blindsiding people into the stands, but he's he's a good blocker, and he's going to be good in the Chargers offense as a blocker on run plays, uh, hopefully with Austin Eckler. And then I went with the Ravens, going with uh, Deontay Banks, staying in Maryland and, and going to Baltimore, where they kind of replace Marcus Peters with a guy that's built similarly. It's Marcus Peters. I think that Deontay Banks is not going to be as cocky, and I think he's going to be better than Marcus Peters. Vikings get wide receiver. Jordan Addison, I think that this is a match made in heaven. I don't know where Jordan Addison is going to go in this draft. I know it's going to be in this range somewhere. It could be the Chargers. Uh, but I just think that the Vikings with Jordan Addison, Justin Jefferson, those guys are going to put on a route-running clinic and, and start to, get, to bounce off each other and really go after secondaries. The Jaguars, I got them going edge Miles Murphy. This is another team that I think could go three or four different directions, but I think all the directions that they go is defense. I think it's edge rusher or DB, one of those two. Uh, Giants pick up Drew Sanders, the linebacker out of uh, Arkansas, I believe. Yeah. Got Tony wanted squeezed in here. The Giants, I think, will be targeting wide receiver, as all the mock drafts have them targeting wide receiver. Everyone thinks they're going to be going wide receiver, but they have a big need in the middle of their defense at linebacker, and they are picking at the end of the first round where some of the receivers are going to go off the board, and if they can't get the receiver that they want, you can wait and get guys at the caliber at the next tier of receivers after you see you know, Jordan Addison and Zay Flowers and all these guys go. Uh, then I got the Cowboys, drafting Jason Witten 2.0. Tony, you got the Cowboys taking Michael Mayer in every mock draft and in this one as well. Uh, the Buccaneers, who I had trade back from 19 with the Buffalo Bills, came up for Zay Flowers. I had them taking Darnell Wright, who could be used at right tackle to replace Donovan Smith, or inside to replace either the inside offensive line that they've lost over the last couple of years. And I got a little bit of a hot take here. It's starting to become a trend that, that Jamari Gibbs is starting to catch the eye of a lot of these teams at the end of the first round. Scared of the Chiefs drafting him. Uh, but I got the Bengals taking him and getting some insurance for whatever the hell is going on with Joe Mixon right now. And at 29, I had the Saints taking defensive tackle, Mozzie Smith, to be an anchor in the middle of their defense. I'm just such a big fan of Mozzie Smith. Every time I put on his tape, I just feel like this guy does not move. He does not budge. He doesn't always get penetration, but he is not getting pushed back ever. His center of the gravity is so low. He's so strong, and he's just dominant. And then I have the Chargers trading back in here. Now, I'm going to say that I don't think Brian Branch is available at 30. But in my mock draft, when things started to stack, I started to realize, like, I don't really have a home for Brian Beck Branch right now other than maybe Minnesota or Jacksonville or in that range of the draft. I'm not going to fall out of the first round. And the Chargers, I don't know if you guys remember, a couple years ago, Anthony Lynn, in his final draft of his career as a head coach, unless he gets a return to the league as a head coach at some point, Tom Telesco was aggressive in the only draft he's ever been aggressive in. He drafted Justin Herbert and then traded from like 50-something to 22 to get Kenneth Murray, who ends up being a bust. I think maybe Staley's in year three. You know, this team's expectations should be skyrocketed to AFC Championship or something like that at least. Maybe Telesco does something similar for Staley that he did for Anthony Lynn. He goes, I'll get you an extra end of first round pick here in Brian Branch if he starts to fall far. But I also just kind of wanted to have fun because when you go over your draft, Tony, it'll make more sense. I saw yours and I was like, if the Chargers don't have a pick in his draft, I need to get two picks in my draft. And then I have the Chiefs uh, getting uh, Andrew Wiley replacement at right tackle. 
and get Anton Harrison. And a guy that if Jawan Taylor does not work out for them and for some reason that contract is not good, he could play left tackle as well. I'll go through mine real quick. Steelers, they trade up with the Chargers and they take the Tennessee offensive tackle Darnell Wright. The Ravens uh, get a much needed cornerback, just like Mike has here, Deontay Banks, uh, Vikings, USC, Pitt wide receiver Jordan Addison. Jaguars take Brian Branch. I, I think that Brian Branch is a piece that they really need, right? Like you went Miles Murphy with Ed Rusher. For me, they drafted Trayvon Walker. They have Josh Allen. Yes, you could always use more pass rushers, but I just think that somewhere in the secondary and a player that's as versatile as Brian Branch, he's a great fit there. I actually could see the Jaguars trying to trade up to assure that they get this one player that, could make the the defense uh, potentially move to a, another level. Uh, Giants, they need interior help. Like you just signed, you got to get John Michael Schmitz in this spot. <laughs> like you you just signed uh, Danny Dimes. You got a tag invested in Saquon. They had troubles with the offensive line, even though they had Evan Neal last year out of Alabama. I think you get that center. Figured out Cowboys, Michael Mayer, the tight end from Notre Dame. Uh, the Bills, they need interior line help. Like, get, go get Osiris Torrance. Just get, like, I know it's not fun and exciting, but I think that's the direction they go. Offensive tack, uh, offensive guard from Florida. Bengals get the, they go in-state. They get the tackle Dewan Jones from Ohio State. This guy is a house. He's like the largest human being. Could you imagine Orlando Brown Jr. on one side and Dewan Jones on the other? Like, come on, come get Burrow. You can't even see him from the outside. The only place he can come is up the center. Uh, Saints, Kalijah can't see. This, uh, I think they're getting a little bit older. Defensive line could use a uh, little bump. A little upgrade, a little maybe interior presence. Uh, I just wanted to get Kalijah in the first round, and, and I couldn't go anywhere else. Eagles, uh, they get uh, Steve Avila. This guy, I think, can play and can cover a couple different positions. I think he could play guard in year one, and depending on what happens, like maybe next year Jurgensen goes to guard and Avila goes to Kelsey, he retires to go work for the NFL Network. Now all of a sudden, you got the offensive line figured out and the Chiefs get Quentin Johnston uh, getting some vertical speed back into this offense uh, that they lost with Tyree Kill. Yeah, so Joe, this is this is interesting. Uh, and we'll, we'll close up after this one because uh, I got to run and pick up my child. Chargers, he goes Jordan Addison. The Ravens, Will McDonald. Um, I could totally see that. Vikings, Deontay Banks. Jaguars, Nolan Smith. That's quite a fall. I could see a lot of teams trading up for him before that. The Bengals, Michael Mayer. Cowboys, uh, Miles Murphy. Uh, Buccaneers, Darnell Wright. Giants, Quentin Johnston. Uh, Saints, Mozzie Smith. Eagles. Keon White, I really like this. He's going to the draft, and I would love to see him after sitting in the draft for 30 picks and thinking, hey, day one might not be my day. You know, like yeah. I'm, I, I, need, I should pack two suits. I hope he does go in the first round. Keon White, I, I think he's going to be a really good, solid NFL player. Like, I don't know if he's great, but I th I'm rooting for him. I, I'd be happy if he found his way to the Chargers. Chiefs, Josh Downs. This is the one I want to talk about. Why would Joe put his favorite wide receiver from this draft on the Chiefs? I thought the same thing when I first saw this. I thought the exact same thing. I mean, you couldn't just flip that and have the Giants get downs and the Chiefs get Johnson or something? Yeah. I could have easily put Richardson on the Raiders, but why would I put my favorite quarterback from this draft on, on the Raiders? I wouldn't do that. Here's the scoring system again, by the way. Here's how we're keeping it. So if you guys want to throw a few trades in your guys' mocks, to try and score some of these bonus points and the way this works is if you get the correct team and just position player you get one bonus point for that just for getting the right position if you get the exact pick right correct team correct player correct correct position 
three points. You get the correct team to trade up or down. So, like, Tony has the Raiders trading up. I have the Raiders trading up. If the Raiders don't trade up to the position we had, we still get one point just for predicting that they traded up if they actually pull through with it. And then if you get the correct team slash trade, the wrong player, but the correct position, it's five points. It's extremely hard to call a perfect trade, y'all. I'm just saying. It's probably unlikely that any of the three of us are going to do it. Maybe one person in the entire competition might be able to pull it off. Now, if you call a perfect trade, you might win the competition off that one trade. Guys, appreciate you guys tuning in. If you haven't liked the video yet, please like it real quick. It helps out in the algorithm when they push this thing out after the live ends. Another big thing, we are going to be live for the draft. And not only are we going to be live, I believe this is the first time that we are going to be live with me, Joe, and Tony sitting in the same room to react to who our teams get and who the rest of the NFL teams get. Please come back to check out the MJT Football YouTube channel. Even if you can't stay for the whole thing, Come say what's up when your team's picking or come say what's up when a specific hot pick gets taken. You know we're going to be reacting to it. We're going to be live right here on this YouTube channel for the entire first round, sitting on my couch in the living room. So it's going to be a ton of fun. You're not going to want to miss it. And we're going to be talking about this challenge throughout the draft as well. Oh, yeah. We're gonna be, I'm going to be talking some shit and making fun go. of Joe. Unless Joe is right, in which case it'll be the wildest draft we've ever seen. Three friends who love talking football. We're always looking for a fourth. So hit the subscribe button uh, until Thursday night, right? Yep. We'll see you guys Thursday. Peace out.